I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. And so we conclude a week which began with the Trump-Russia scandal as a complicated, labyrinthine, bizarre international tangle of questions about computer hacking and about money laundering and about collusion, but which ended with the Trump-Russia scandal as a simple, straightforward, traditional American, easy-to-digest set of questions about obstruction of justice and witness intimidation and presidential cover-ups. Trump and Russia is no longer about Trump and Russia. He could be as pure as the driven snow about Russia. But he and he alone has made the Trump and Russia story about covering up the Trump and Russia story. In articles of impeachment, and if he leaves or is removed from office, perhaps in criminal prosecution afterwards, Trump could theoretically wind up being accused of 17 separate counts of six separate crimes in just the last week. Working backwards, Friday's tweet, James Comey better hope that there are no tapes of our conversations before he starts leaking to the press. That could be prosecuted as a blackmail threat to a private citizen. That tweet could be interpreted as intimidation of a possible witness in an official proceeding, 18 U.S. Code 1512. That carries a sentence of up to 20 years. That's two possible crimes in the Trump-Russia cover-up, plus the reference to tapes. In the District of Columbia, there is nothing illegal about taping your own conversation. But as Richard Nixon learned to his chagrin, a president does not own that recording. If Trump destroys the recording or cannot prove he was just lying in the tweet and the recording never existed, that could be a charge of destruction of government property. And the third of the three articles of impeachment against Nixon in 1974 was entirely about the president's refusal to turn over secret White House tapes which Congress had subpoenaed. His handling of evidence, the tapes, was believed to fit the constitutional definition of high crimes and misdemeanors. So one tweet four possible charges. The day before Thursday the 11th came the New York Times report that Trump had brought Comey to the White House for dinner on January 27. That's when Trump reportedly asked if he was being investigated and reportedly asked Comey for his loyalty. That loyalty pledge Trump has only partly denied. His advisor Kellyanne Conway has endorsed it. As the Harvard professor and scholar of constitutional law Lawrence Tribe noted, quote, that is clearly on its face, obstruction of justice. He continued, what it really means is, can I count on you not to make me a target of this investigation? That's clearly an impermissible question. So there is a fifth potential charge, obstruction of justice in the possible investigation of Donald J. Trump. But there's a sixth, too. That dinner was the day after the acting attorney general, Sally Yates, first warned the White House that Michael Flynn had been compromised by Russia. So was Trump also trying to get Comey to obstruct justice for the sake of Flynn? This is more of a stretch, but there may be a seventh here. Could Trump be charged with trying to get a threat or warning to Yates to lay off Flynn via Comey? And a can of worms Trump opened that might be bigger even than whether or not he has recorded White House conversations. When the report came that he had reportedly asked Comey to, in essence, swear loyalty, another question bubbled up in the background. Did Trump ask anybody else to do that? Each time he asked someone who may have been involved in the investigation, it could be another separate count of obstruction of justice. And just as importantly, if he asked... Did anybody say yes? Because once somebody else says yes, you could then have a conspiracy to obstruct justice. Just one of each of these charges, and there are already nine counts in the Trump-Russia cover-up just against Trump. And we are still not done with Thursday the 11th. Trump's interview with NBC that evening, in which it almost seemed as if he had deliberately unraveled the Stonewall defense his staff had used for 48 hours, insisting Comey's firing had nothing to do with Russia, and only happened because the Attorney General and Deputy Attorney General recommended it. Quoting, Regardless of recommendation, I was going to fire Comey, and in fact, when I decided to just do it, I said to myself, you know, this Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made-up story. Not only could this be yet another obstruction of justice charge, our 10th charge of the Trump-Russia cover-up, but you could also go out on a limb and accuse anybody in Trump's administration, Trump included, who advanced the claims that this was about Comey's competence or the Hillary Clinton emails or the recommendations of others of obstructing justice again if they knowingly lied about why Comey was fired 
and issued an official government press release about it. Essentially, that's obstructing justice about obstructing justice. So that would be an 11th charge and a conspiracy to do that with Sean Spicer, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Vice President Pence, and Trump all involved in that original story, conspiracy would make 12. Moving back to Wednesday, May 10th, there's a 13th possible charge. McClatchy News quoted White House sources who say that when Attorney General Sessions and his deputy Rod Rosenstein went to see Trump two days earlier to complain about Comey, Trump had then asked them to write the letter which he had originally cited as the cause for firing Comey. That now is another possible tentacle of conspiracy in the Trump-Russia cover-up case. Trump asking the Department of Justice to give him a document, a false weapon, with which to fire the head of the FBI. The day before, Tuesday the 9th, had the most obvious of the possible charges. Number 14, Comey's firing itself. You cannot fire the criminal investigator investigating you for possible criminality in the middle of his criminal investigation. It is obstruction of justice. And as a reminder, the first article of impeachment against Richard Nixon was just a string of obstructions of justice. As Obama's presidential ethics czar Norm Eisen tweeted, newly revealed demand for loyalty was the obstruction. Firing was consummation of the threat. Legally, the loyalty demand and the firing could be viewed as separate events. But there's still one more. On Monday the 8th, before her dramatic testimony to the Senate Judiciary Committee, Trump tweeted about the once acting attorney general. Ask Sally Yates under oath if she knows how classified information got into the newspapers soon after she explained it to White House counsel. Well, we are back where we started. Just like Friday with Comey, Monday with Yates, Trump may have violated Section 18 U.S. Code 1512, intimidating a witness in an official proceeding, and maybe intimidating a whistleblower, and maybe intimidating a private citizen. Seventeen potential charges for Trump in the theoretical articles of impeachment pertaining to the Trump-Russia cover-up case. There's one each for possible destruction of government property and in the hypothetical possible refusal to turn over subpoenaed evidence. Two for intimidating witnesses. Two for threatening private citizens. One for threatening a whistleblower. One for threatening the acting attorney general. Maybe two more for separate conspiracies to commit obstruction of justice and perhaps seven for obstruction of justice. That is all staggering, but it may still be burying the lead. As he started to compose his tweet about Sally Yates on the 8th, Trump faced terrifying and solemn accusations about Russia. But there were also complicated, confusing ones. Frankly, how many Americans know what Alpha Bank is? How many might not be certain if Carter Page is a guy or a document? What can cause even well-informed citizens to check out faster than a bunch of Russians all named Sergei? Donald Trump has now eliminated his own benefit of the confusion. The Trump-Russia cover-up case is now about threatening people and firing people and pressuring people to keep them from investigating you and your colleagues. The most immediate threat to his presidency is no longer about Russian smoke that not everybody can see and even fewer can trace. It is now about I decided to just do it. I said to myself, you know, this Russia thing. It is now about Ask Sally Yates. It is now about James Comey better hope that there are no tapes of our conversations. The smoke doesn't matter anymore. Who needs Russian smoke when the White House is on fire? Resist. Peace.